What's going on, y'all? Grind and Motivate back in this thing again, man, with another video. And today I want to talk about the whole Jordan Neely situation of him getting choked out on the train until he passed away. And I want to ask you guys a few questions. Do you think it was racially motivated? Do you think that Jordan Neely deserved it? What does this say about the justice system in the United States? Go ahead and answer all those questions down below. And as we get into the video, I will give you my thoughts. But let's dive in. So here I have a small excerpt from an article on the New York Post. And shout out to CP, the artist, for sending me this. He wanted me to have my information right before I made the video because we were talking about it a little bit when it first happened. And I only took this little small portion out because it pretty much keeps on talking about the same thing throughout the article. In the beginning, it says, quote, he starts to make a speech freelance journalist Juan Alberto Vasquez said in Spanish during an interview Tuesday, referring to the disturbed man. He started screaming in an aggressive manner, Vasquez told the Post. He said he had no food, he had no drink, that he was tired and doesn't care if he goes to jail. He started screaming all these things, took off his jacket, a black jacket that he had, and threw it on the ground. That's when he said that Staff Hanger came up behind Neely, took him to the ground in a chokehold, keeping him there for some 15 minutes, Vasquez said. So it sounds to me that there was not really a reason for Staff Hanger to you know, to come up behind him. And it, and it sounded like, you know, the dude wasn't doing anything but throwing his jacket down and, you know, yelling and talking. And he just decided to take it in his own hands. He, he went on a Hitman Agent 47, basically. You know how when you come up behind somebody, you just take them down with a choco? That's what he did. Okay, who's doing that? But yeah, man, when it comes to stuff like this man as far as like mentally ill people and you know homeless folks and jays i mean you see that every day here in atlanta and it's not you know you're not running around here playing vigilante trying to whoop up on homeless dudes because they talk crazy it's just like you kind of you keep an eye on them a little closer but you're not sitting there like oh, i can't wait to just punch on this guy or something like that you kind of ignore them a little bit like they say stuff all the time and you just ignore them you walk past them you might just be looking at them a little closer but you're not really out here aimed at trying to subdue them or take them down or anything like that. I mean, if they do kind of get close, then that's when you start talking to them. But they normally back down quickly if you say something to them. So I think Staff Hanger was just kind of looking for something to do. Then at the end, it says the approximate three minute and a half long video shot by Vasquez shows the blind subway rider lying on the floor of the train with his arm wrapped around the man's neck. And I thought that... uh that video, I didn't, I'm not going to put it up because you know how YouTube is, but I thought that that, that video definitely was, uh, it, it had it made me angry, especially seeing that, that other lame ass black dude sitting there kind of holding the other guy's arms that was getting choked. Why would you hold this guy's arms? He's already in a chokehold and he's been down there. If a guy's been down there in a chokehold for more than what a minute, I mean, just, yeah, it's, it's pretty much over with, man. I mean, what do you guys want him, want him to do? At this point, I mean, it's, it's really stupid. And, and, and the guy who choked him out was a Marine. So he knows better than to choke somebody out for 15 minutes. They tell you that three minutes, three seconds is all you need to take somebody and put them on conscious. And then after that, you're now killing brain cells and you can possibly kill the person. Everybody gets taught this. If you've been trained in combat at any point, you're taught this. If you've been trained in jujitsu, you're taught this. If you've been trained in goddamn... Uh, I guess the Marines, obviously you should be taught this if you've been trained in, I, I, well, I guess not in the police force because they be on some bullshit. All y'all don't know how to fight. You would probably be taught this, but yeah. that. So this guy knew what he was doing, but he wanted to, he wanted to go ahead and, you know, end him. And I, and I feel like when it came to this whole situation that he felt, oh yeah, this is a black dude. He homeless. Nobody will care about him if I go ahead and choke him out. This is also one of those situations where you put somebody in a certain move because you don't care what happens. Like, uh, I don't know if anybody's ever fought or any, anything before. If you ever, if you fought somebody, maybe you're thinking of the worst thing you can do to somebody because you don't care what happens. Like, let's say you're fighting somebody, they pick up a bat and they try to hit you with it. They're trying to end you. If somebody picks up a knife in a fight, you and some girl's fighting, she's crazy. They're, she's trying to end you. You should not be with her anymore anyway, but she's trying to end you. This is kind of the same thing except it's just hand to hand this guy decided oh yeah man what's the worst move i can do and uh get away with it 
And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him in a chokehold. Because there are several other different moves he could do, especially being a, a Marine. I'm sure they train you guys in, in hand-to-hand combat because you're going to be got, you know, doing a bunch of situations that you're going to be in combat unless this dude was like a cook or something. But, yeah, there's definitely different moves he could have did to subdue the guy. If, you're, if your aim is to subdue the guy, first off, some folks are going to be like, oh, he already he had him in a chokehold, man. Like, nobody wants to be touching on a nasty homie. You had him in a chokehold, bro. That's already too close for comfort. So you might as well have did something else. You could have just simply held his arms down. He didn't have no weapons. We saw the video. He didn't have any weapons. You could have hit the knee on belly. I don't know if y'all know that technique. If, if you ever took jiu-jitsu or you've taken any grappling classes or anything like that, that's another way to subdue a regular civilian person. You, all you got to do is kind of frame their arms, hold them down, and you just, you know, they, they you, you keep on kind of moving your knee around. That way you're not just super suffocating their, their stomach or nothing like that. You're not, you're not keeping them from breathing out at all. But, yeah, he was trying to he was trying to do the worst, man. He's trying to do his damnedest, man, trying to go and get him up out of there, man. And me and CP, the artist, were talking about, man, if we think it was racial or not. I would say that uh, maybe there's a little bit of race that plays into it. Like I said, he thought about all the factors before he did it. When he was sitting there while the guy was going on his rant, he was like, yeah, this guy's black. He's homeless. Nobody will care. He's not like, you don't, you don't just get up and choke a guy and don't think about what the guy looks like or who he is. If I'm choking a dude, I'm like, oh, he's white. Oh, he's Arabian. Oh, he's Asian. I'm going to be thinking about it. So all these folks be like, yeah, I don't see color. I don't see color when I kill. Shut up, man. Shut the hell up. You shot like an idiot. But I think it, I think it was a little racial. I think he he felt like how the internet is where, you know, you can kind of just do whatever you want to do, say whatever you, you want to say to black people with impunity and get away with it. Like, it's, it's the same thing. Like, you know, he's looking at it like I'm crushing a bug, a homeless black dude. How easy. This is an easy kill for me. Easy work. But let's go. Next up, I asked y'all, did y'all think that Jordan nearly deserved it? And apparently this guy thinks so. So in his comment, he says, he has over 40 arrests for assault. Among other things, we're allowed to defend ourselves from violent black criminals. You see, he capitalized all the letters. This dude's definitely a beta male that, you know, he's got his two-way rights. He's probably fat, dad bod, losing his hair, but he's keeping it for some reason. Glasses. And he wears jeans with New Balance running shoes that he does not run in. But yeah, I don't think that uh, I can agree with this right here. I actually went and checked it out to see, you know, if it's 40 arrests for, for assault. And let's see. I went ahead and Googled it up and it said that Jordan Neely was a New Yorker suffering from mental illness. And we all failed him. Police said that Neely has a history of mental health issues and records show he has been arrested for 40 times. So the white dude in the previous comment omitted the truth. He said, yeah, he's been arrested for assault 40 times. And that doesn't say what it, you know, that's not what it says here. It says, you know, he's just been arrested 40 times. And you guys know that homeless dudes just get arrested. You get arrested for loitering, hanging around little areas, just kind of just being, you know, just being around. You know, you can't sleep here. You're getting arrested. You know, you're over here too late. You're being arrested. You're at the park being arrested. So, I mean, we can't really just say, oh, yeah, he was out there getting, getting uh, his assault on. We don't know that. It's not like homeless people are just constantly calling the cops off of their, uh, their cell phone that they've got while they're living in a tent somewhere, you know? And unless he's, you know, he's running up here being a terrorist to civilians and hitting uh, hit some white lady at Starbucks or something like that. I don't really see it happening. But yeah, man, uh, so we don't know. The white dude who admitted the truth, I don't think we can really, you know, uh, give him that. And, and plus, the little staff hanger dude didn't know anything about that when he decided, oh yeah, I'm going to choke this guy out for 15 minutes. He didn't know. Oh, yeah, he's got 40 arrests. It's not like, you know, when you're walking around on one of them futuristic movies and you see like a little a little meter on the top of their head that tells you it'll tell how much money they got, what kind of little problems they got. What, what's that movie called, man? It was one of the movies where, you know, you could walk around and you'll see like what all that person has going on in their bank account. What is their history? All that. But yeah, it's not like he saw that. And he was like, yeah, I'll take him down. And that's a, a, an, another annoying white, uh, another annoying thing that that racist white people do. Not white people, but racist white people do. They seem to always justify it by like, oh yeah, uh, well yeah he, uh, yeah he, well yeah he did, uh, he did steal some TVs from Walmart when he was 11, and uh, you know yeah I probably stole some stuff too, but yeah he he deserved it because he stole some candy, uh, some baseball cards, and some TV. So yeah he uh, he probably deserved that. 
like with the whole Maude Aubrey thing, they always kind of look back into your past to try to justify it. And uh, this right here, I can't really give it to him, man. So I'm going to say that he didn't deserve it. He wasn't doing anything that uh, that warranted old boy to come back and, and choke him and take him down for 15 minutes. He was just sitting up yelling, as homeless dudes tend to do, mental ill homeless dudes tend to do. They just be yelling and talking. You just kind of ignore them. CP says this kind of stuff goes down on the subway quite often. It goes down on the subway quite often. But I would think that most people would just be sitting there ignoring them. Well, that's what that's what CP said, too. He said most people would ignore them. But it sounds like this dude was just like, I'm going to take them take them, take the matters into my own hands. He thought he was goddamn Judge Dredd. I am the law. He had been watching too many goddamn Judge Dredd and uh, little Edgelord movies and stuff like that. He was one of them edgy white dudes. But let's go. Last part here says the staff hanger. I don't know why they said that. It's like when they be naming these buildings now. The Biltmore, whose sources said is a Marine veteran, was taken into custody and later released without charges. The investigation is ongoing and authorities were waiting on autopsy results before deciding whether to pursue charges against the younger man. So that, that's kind of laughable right there. You're on video choking this man. Now, you obviously did it. You're at least getting a manslaughter charge if you're not getting a... Uh, you know, a straight up deletion charge. So I'm not really agreeing with that right there. That definitely shows a little bit of inconsistencies in the justice system here in the U.S. of A. As usual, if Staff Hanker had been black and he choked out a white dude that was homeless, I think we definitely see a little bit more going on with this whole situation. There's no way that you're going to take this man into custody knowing he, he deleted this dude and then go ahead and let him go without charges. And then now y'all talking about, some, yeah, we're waiting on the autopsy. What kind of autopsy results? Y'all trying to George Floyd the man? Yeah, he was on drugs. He was on drugs. So yeah, the drugs. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That's like my grandmother going to the to the nursing home. And then there's like, oh yeah, well, she had diabetes already. So I just kicked her down the steps and, uh, you know, I ended the job for you. Uh, you know, I put her out of misery. That's, that's stupid. And that's what they're going to try to do here, man. So to end it, was it racial? I'll say yeah, a little bit. I think the white dude was definitely looking, you know, at everything. He thought of everything before he did what he did, and he still did it. Didn't nearly deserve it. Nah, he's just a homeless dude ranting and raving. We all we, we all see homeless dudes every, everywhere, unless you know, uh, you know, you live in like Mayberry or something like that. You probably see homeless dudes and you ignore them. This guy chose not to ignore him. He chose to do the worst. Final thing. There's a justice system. Uh, is the justice system jacked up here in the U.S.? It's super jacked up. I think that Staff Hank should definitely be in jail. And we need to go and arrest that black coon dude, too, man. We're going to get you up out of there, too, bro. Get you uh, get you in Rikers and let them go and touch you up. And uh, let somebody else hold your arms down while they touch you up. But, yeah, I think uh, I think this is definitely some crazy stuff right here, man. Uh, Staff Hanger definitely, he definitely, I think, intended to he intended to end that man's life, and it was a little racial, and he should be in prison, and I don't think they nearly deserved it. But if you have, you know, you feel differently about it, let me know down in the comments below. How do you feel about it, period? Let me know down in the comments below. But if you watched up to this point, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.